Capacitors in AC circuits. So an AC circuit typically starts with an AC power supply. An AC power supply uh, has a symbol that looks like this. So a squiggly line, like a sine wave inside a circle. And it has actually two parameters. So a DC power supply uh, in its simplest form is just one number, the, uh, its voltage. But the AC power supply has a voltage and a frequency. And the convention with AC power supplies is to typically report that voltage in the root mean squared voltage. So um, in the US, the root mean squared voltage that you get in a household is typically 110 or 120 volts. And the frequency would be 60 hertz. So it oscillates back and forth between uh, about 170 and minus 170 volts 60 times per second. That's what that number tells us. So again, two parameters for an AC power supply. And I'm going to connect that cert, the power supply to a single capacitor and we're going to do a bunch of calculations to basically predict what happens when this capacitor interacts with the AC power supply. And let's say that this capacitor has a capacitance of 37 microfarads. Okay, so the first thing I would do with this circuit is calculate something called capacitive reactance. And capacitive reactance is a, is a very handy thing to calculate uh, in these types of circuits because it kind of takes the place of resistance um, and, it, and we can, so we can treat the capacitor kind of like a resistor. So capacitive reactance has, use symbol X, I don't know why, and it's one over the angular frequency times the capacitance. Okay, so good, of course you gotta be careful, angular frequency isn't the same as frequencies, but um, we basically have all the data we need. So one over two pi times the frequency, and then we have the, uh, the capacitance of 37 microfarads, so converting everything to SI units, and I find that the, I throw that into my calculator and I get 71.7 ohms. Okay, so if you do the dimensional analysis, you do actually end up with ohms. And um, so that suggests that we can treat the uh, capacitor sort of like a resistor. And that's what's kind of cool about AC circuits is that capacitors and inductors act sort of like resistors. And the analysis uh, gets uh, is actually fairly simple. It seems like it would be a lot more complicated because we have this alternating voltage here but um, in some sense it, it becomes simpler. So we can predict the, the current in this circuit using uh, a formula that looks a lot like Ohm's law for a resistor. So the voltage across the capacitor will be the current of the capacitor times the capacitive reactance. So basically I've just taken R and replaced it with X and we've got a formula for uh, for a capacitor. You can't do anything like that with a, with a DC circuit. That doesn't work. But uh, with AC circuit we can. And so if I'm going to predict the current, I just take the voltage over the capacitive reactance, throw in those numbers. So I've got 120 volts. Uh, by the way, that's 120 volts RMS. And so I'm also calculating the RMS current. Got to be, be careful about that. Um, so the capacitive reactance is 71.7 and I get 1.67 amperes. So that would be the root mean squared current through that, uh, for, uh, for that capacitor. Also, the uh, root mean squared current for the, for the power supply. So it's just one uh, simple loop. Okay, one other thing that we could uh, determine is the average power. For a capacitor, the average power is actually zero. So it's alternately getting charged where it's sucking a little bit of energy away from the uh, the power supply and then it's discharging and it actually is giving energy back to the power supply on average it's doing nothing it's not steadily taking away energy it's not steadily giving it energy so it averages uh, averages out to zero okay um, so that's it for a, a simple capacitor in an AC circuit thanks for watching